Speaker Ryan, Majority Leader McCarthy, Majority Whip Scalise, Chairwoman McMorris Rogers, Chairman Brady, Chairman Walden, Chairwoman Black, Congressman MacArthur, Congressman Meadows, and all the principled members of Congress who are standing with us here today. On behalf of President Donald Trump and the First Family, welcome to the White House. And thanks to the leadership of President Donald Trump, welcome to the beginning of the end of Obamacare. It was March 2010, seven years ago, Democrats passed a government takeover of health care. And at that time, Republicans in Congress promised the American people that law would not stand. Today, thanks to the perseverance, the determination, and the leadership of President Donald Trump and all the support of those gathered here, we've taken a historic first step to repeal and replace Obamacare and finally give the American people the kind of health care they deserve. So today, with heartfelt gratitude for all he has done to keep his word to the American people and for all he will do to continue to make America great again, it is my high honor and distinct privilege to introduce to you the President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That's the group. Thank you. Thank you very much. This really is the group. What a great group of people. And they're not even doing it for the party. They're doing it for this country because we suffered with Obamacare. I went through two years of campaigning, and I'm telling you, no matter where I went, people were suffering so badly with the ravages of Obam Obamacare. And I will say this, that uh, as far as I'm concerned, your premiums, they're going to start to come down. We're going to get this passed through the Senate. I feel so confident. Uh, your deductibles, when it comes to deductibles, they were so ridiculous that nobody got to use their current plan, uh, this non-existent plan that I heard so many wonderful things about over the last three or four days after that. I mean, it's uh, — I don't think you're going to hear so much right now. The insurance companies are fleeing. It's been a catastrophe, and this is a great plan. I actually think it will get even better. And this is — make no mistake — this is a repeal and a replace of Obamacare. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake. And I think most importantly, yes, premiums will be coming down. Yes, deductibles will be coming down. But very importantly, it's a great plan. And ultimately, that's what it's all about. We knew that wasn't going to work. I predicted it a long time ago. I said it's failing. And now it's obvious that it's failing. It's dead. It's essentially dead. If we don't pay lots of ransom money over to the insurance companies, it would die immediately. So what we have is something very, very incredibly well-crafted. Tell you what, there is a lot of talent standing behind me, an unbelievable amount of talent. That I can tell you. I mean it. And, you know, coming from a different world and only being a politician for a short period of time, how am I doing? Am I doing okay? I'm president. Hey, I'm president. Can you believe it, right? I don't know. It's, I thought you needed a little bit more, more time, they always told me, more time, but we didn't. But we have an amazing group of people standing behind me. They worked so hard, and they worked so long. And what I said, let's do this. Let's go out, just short little shots for each one of us, 
and let's say how good this plan is. We don't have to talk about this unbelievable victory. Wasn't it unbelievable? So we don't have to say it again. But it's going to be an unbelievable victory, actually, when we get it through the Senate, and there's so much spirit there. But I said, let's go out. We have a little list of some of the people. And I think after that list goes, if they don't talk too long, our first list, uh, we're going to let some of the other folks just come up and say whatever you want. But we want to brag about the plan, because this plan really — uh-oh. Oh. Well, yeah, we may. But we're just going to talk a little bit about the plan, how good it is, some of the great features. I want to thank uh, Paul Ryan. He has worked so hard. And I was joking. I said, you know, Paul, for the last week, I've been hearing Paul Ryan doesn't have it. It's not working with Paul Ryan. He's going to get rid of Paul Ryan. Then today, I heard Paul Ryan's a genius. He's come along. <laughs> you know, the groups have all come together. We have the Tuesday group. We have so many groups. We have the Freedom Caucus. We have — and they're all great people. But we have a lot of groups. But they all came together. Really, Paul, I'd say in the last — three, four days, especially in the last day. I see Mark, and I see Kevin, I see so many people, Jim. Uh, we just have developed a bond. This has really brought the Republican Party together. As much as we've come up with a really incredible health care plan, this has brought the Republican Party together. We're going to get this finished, and then we're going — as you know, we put our tax plan in. It's a massive tax cut, the biggest tax cut in the history of our country. I used to say the biggest since Ronald Reagan. Now it's bigger than that. Also, pure tax reform. So we're going to get that done next, and this really helps it. A lot of people said, how come you kept pushing health care, knowing how tough it is? Don't forget, Obamacare took 17 months. Hillary Clinton tried so hard, really valiantly, in all fairness, to get health care through. Didn't happen. We've really been doing this for eight weeks, if you think about it. And this is a real plan. This is a great plan. And we had no support from the other party. So I just want to introduce somebody to say a few words who really has been, I think, treated very unfairly, but it no longer matters because we won and we're going to finish it off, and we're going to go on to a lot of other things. And we are going to have a tremendous four years, and maybe even more importantly, we're going to have a tremendous eight years. But we're going to start off with just a great first year. And Paul Ryan, come up and say a few words. Congratulations on a job well done. Thank you. you get thick skin on this job. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> ah. guys. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Um, there are too many people to name who played such an important role in helping us get to this part. But I want to thank a, a few people in particular. I want to thank Chairman Greg Walden. Kevin Brady, Diane Black, Pete Sessions, and the members of their committees for all the hard work they put into getting us to this point. I want to thank all the other members who contributed to making this the best bill possible. It really was a collaborative, consensus-driven effort. I also want to thank the team here at the White House. I want to thank Tom Price. I want to thank Mick Mulvaney. And I especially want to thank Reince Priebus. We could not have done this without you, gentlemen. You guys are the best. Of course, this would not have been possible if it weren't for these two gentlemen behind me. This is the fourth presidency I've served with. I have never, ever seen any kind of engagement like this. I want to thank Mike Prince, and I want to thank President Donald Trump for their personal involvement in working with our members and working to get this right, for getting this done and getting us to where we are. Thank you, gentlemen. <clears throat> Today was a big day, but it is just one step in this process, an important step. We still have a lot of work to do to get this signed into law. And I know that our friends over in the Senate are eager to get to work. <laughs> they are. We're going to see that work through. 
You know why we're going to see this work through? Because the issues are just too important. The stakes are just too high. The problems facing American families are real. And the problems facing American families as a result of Obamacare are just too dire and too urgent. Just this week, just this week, we learned of another state, Iowa, where the last remaining health care plan is pulling out of 94 of their 99 counties, leaving most of their citizens with no plans on the Obama market at all. What kind of protection is Obamacare if there are no plans to choose from? And this is a trend that we are seeing all across the country. The truth is, this law has failed and it is collapsing. Premiums are skyrocketing and choices are disappearing. And it is only getting worse, spiraling out of control. And that is why we have to repeal this law and put in place a real, vibrant marketplace with competition and lower premiums for families. That's what the American Health Care Act is all about. It makes health care more affordable. It takes care of our most vulnerable. And it shifts power from Washington back to the states and, most importantly, back to you, the patient. Like I said, we've got a lot of work to do. But one thing is now clear. Republicans are committed to keeping our promise to lift the burden of Obamacare from the American people and put in place a better, more patient-centered system. It is my pleasure at this time to, to thank and to welcome to the stage someone who helped make this so possible, our very talented Majority Leader, Kevin McCarthy. I remember the very first time I came down here to see the new president, President Trump. We talked about health care. You know what the president said? He said, let's not make this partisan. Don't do what you think is right for the Republican Party. Do what's right for the American country. And today, that's exactly what we did. You see, if you simply read the papers from this week, you take politics out of it and you put people before politics, how do you look in the faces of 94 counties in Iowa out of 99? Well, not that they won't have very many choices, they'll have no choice. How do you care for pre-existing conditions when there's no care at all? Or you read the paper yesterday and you look at Aetna pulling out of Virginia, or to Tennessee next year with 16 counties with no care. Or what about those families that paid into those 23 co-ops that Obamacare created with more than $2 billion. 18 of them have collapsed. And the only answer that this American government gives them is a penalty. If you simply look at the facts, more people took the penalty or the exemption than actually signed up for Obamacare. I did not run to this office to promote a party. I ran for this office to make this country better. Yeah, and it would be easy to say no. It would be easy to watch it collapse. But I can't look at those families. I don't think that's right. And that's the exact message I got from this administration. So, Mr. President, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your leadership. I want to thank the Vice President. You know, I've only been through a few presidents but I've never seen someone so hands-on. Walk into my office yesterday morning, they say the president's calling again. I pick up the phone. I happen to be the majority leader, the former whip. I know my members well. The president gives me a list of who he thinks I would be best to talk to on the list. And he was right. And Mr. President, they all voted for the bill. Today is a start. Today is the start of a new beginning. Yes, it's about providing better health care. But I happen to have been a small business owner. I listened to my district. You know how many families no longer have a 40-hour job and now have to take two part-time jobs? Or how many small businesses told me that they couldn't expand anymore because they were afraid of what Obamacare would do for them? We are going to unshackle, build an economy, let people have greater choice in their health care, and protect pre-existing conditions. 
and I thank you for that work. I want to call up. I was this job before being majority whip. I never had to go through a bill like this. And I will tell you, being the whip really isn't one person. The deputy whip should get a lot of credit as well. Yeah. Patrick McHenry. The whip Steve, Steve Scalise never gave up, answered every question, and the team between Scalise and McHenry I'd put beyond any team we've ever had. I give you the majority whip, Steve Scalise. Yeah. Today we took the first step toward rescuing families from the failures of Obamacare. We've been seeing it play out all across the country. Uh, this isn't some hypothetical discussion. Uh, you see families struggling in every part of our country. I have from families all the time in my district in southeast Louisiana sharing with me stories of double-digit premium increases every single year. Uh, when we had the 27 and a half hour markup before the House Energy and Commerce Committee, longest they said in the history of Congress, uh, to pass this bill out of committee, uh, we had a long and important discussion about health care policy in America and how this isn't about achieving some kind of political goal. It's about families, families who are struggling under the weight of this law that doesn't work. And so I reached out to my own constituents and I said, share with me some of the stories and how this law, Obamacare, is affecting you personally. And unfortunately, I got a lot of horror stories. You know, we've talked a lot about protecting people with pre-existing conditions in the context of this bill. And there are so many things, multiple, multiple layers in our bill that we passed today that not only protect people with pre-existing conditions, but actually focus real targeted money on lowering premiums for families with pre-existing conditions. And so during the committee hearing, might have been around 3 in the morning, I shared a story of one of those constituents, Chris from Slidell, who sent me a letter and talked about their family having pre-existing conditions. They have a family member with pre-existing conditions and how because of the problems of Obamacare, they're paying double-digit increases. But this is the real story for families that have pre-existing conditions that are truly being hurt by Obamacare. Uh, one of the untold stories are the dramatic increases in deductibles. So there are a lot of families across the country that have over $10,000 deductibles. Now, for most people, that means they really can't even use the health care that they have in Obamacare. And so what Chris told me was, not only when we go to the doctor do we have to pay so much for our premium, but almost everything we do we're paying out of pocket because we've got such a large deductible. So basically I'm paying a lot of money for a health care plan that doesn't work for me. Please provide relief for my family. We hear these stories over and over. And what's been so encouraging about this debate is that from the very beginning, every member of Congress that's been involved in trying to get this bill passed has been focused on two main things. And the first one is lowering premiums for families that are struggling. And the second is making sure that patients and doctors are the ones that make their own health care decisions. Unelected bureaucrats in Washington should not have anything to do with the health care decisions made between a patient and their doctor. And that ends with this bill. And so as we went through this process, and it took weeks, some people wanted it to take a couple of days. But we said we're going to take the time to get it right because it affects every person in this country. And every change that was made along the way made this bill better. Almost every change that was made along the way was focused on lowering premiums. Of course, you had a lot of other things we wanted to do. We reformed the Medicaid program, one of the most broken parts of health care. Anybody will tell you is Medicaid. And so we actually give governors and states the flexibility to go and be innovative and do things that will, in a much more targeted way, help low-income families in a way that Medicare is failing them today. That's another important aspect of this bill. Uh, but we wouldn't be here today without the work and the help of the President and the Vice President of the United States directly getting involved. Because every meeting we had with members that wanted to get additional, uh, additional components added to the bill, President Trump said, bring him into the White House. I want to meet with him. I want to talk to him about how we can actually lower premiums. Because President Trump's focus from the beginning was the same thing. He knows Obamacare fails. 
but it's failing because it's hurting families. And he said, how can we lower premiums? How can we give patients more control of the health care? And ultimately, all of the meetings that we had along the way that made this bill better were focused on those objectives. And that's why it's so important that we got this first step done today. There's a lot of work left to be done. And I look forward to the Senate taking the action that they need to take, but ultimately getting a bill to President Trump's desk that he'll sign that actually rescue families from this incredibly failed law and put patients back in charge of their health care decisions and lower premiums. And the man that led the charge in starting this process in the committee was the House Energy and Commerce Committee Chairman, Greg Walden. I want to bring him up. Hey, Mr. Gleese, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, it has been a pleasure and an honor to work with you hand in hand to get this bill to this point. And I want to tell you what a great team you have and what a great team I think we have in the Congress and on the Energy and Commerce Committee and our subcommittee chair, Mike Burgess. Mike, come on out here for a second. Uh, Dr. Mike Burgess has done incredible work uh, on this as well. You You've heard a lot about our goal to get this back to a patient-doctor relationship, to make insurance affordable to every American and available where they have choices and lower costs and competition in that market. It is collapsing around us state by state, county by county. Last year, there were 225 counties in America where you only had one choice on the Obamacare exchange. This year, it's 1,022, and you've heard now there are some counties where you'll have no choice. That's not affordability. That's not access. That's not patient care. That is what we're trying to reform in this legislation. You heard about Medicaid reform. I started on Medicaid reform in the 1989 session of the Oregon legislature. I helped out there. We became the majority in 90. I was majority leader in 91. We continued these reforms to achieve this same goal of trying to get people care that they needed when they didn't have it. And I continue that battle today. We reached out to governors. We reached out to insurance commissioners. We reached out to innovators in this space. Now, I think about Governor Herbert out of Utah, who told us the story of having to petition CMS, the old CMS, not Seema Verma and Tom Price's CMS, to see if he could use a modern, new, innovative technology to communicate with his Medicaid recipients who had that same technology. You and I would know that as email. <laughs> Nine months later, the government here in Washington denied his request to communicate with people who had email by email. They told him no. And I said to the governor of Utah, how much would that have saved your state? He said $6 million. Now, do you want to spend it in snail mail, on postage, or do you want to spend it in health care? But the bigger question is, why do you have to come to Washington, D.C. to get that kind of permission to begin with? So what this legislation does is open up the ability for states to innovate, for doctors and patients and legislators to get together state by state and make a real difference for the people of Utah or the people of Oregon or the people of Florida. We can get this right. It is our duty. It is our obligation. This is the first step. I look forward to the partnership with the Senate and continuing with one with the White House till we get this signed into law. Thank you. Oh. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce the chairwoman of the uh, Budget Committee, the, the chair who put us on this task, a nurse, an incredibly <laughs> capable legislator, Diane Black. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Some 45 years ago, I graduated from nursing school, and when I graduated, I took an oath of honor um, to devote myself to those committed to my care. And it is what brought me here to Congress, because I saw almost seven years ago what this was doing to those in my state. The people who come to me at church, that stop me in the grocery store, that stop me wherever I am in a ball field with my grandchildren to tell me with tears in their eyes, please help us. Please help us. The premiums have gone up. The deductibles are so high, we cannot even get the care even if we pay our premiums. It was breaking my heart and has been breaking my heart over those last uh, seven years now that I've been hearing this. And so this is a great day for us. This is just the beginning. We have the opportunity now to rescue people, to give them the opportunity to truly, truly get the kind of care that they want, they deserve, with the doctors that they choose and a price they can afford. And that's what this celebration is about. It's not about politics. It's about looking those people in the eye. The people that were thrown off of their care in our state 
28,000 people lost their care in our risk program in one day, just like that. And this is a great day. It's just the beginning. There's still more to be done. I'm hopeful that the Senate is even going to make this bill better. There's so many people to thank. There are a lot of them are standing back here. But most of all, I want to say thank you to Mr. President and Mr. Vice President for being engaged, for giving an opportunity for our members to feel they're being heard, and at the end of the day, to get a product that's really going to work for the American people. That's what this is all about. And now it's my honor to bring uh, to the podium my chairman of Ways and Means, um, Representative Brady. Thank you, Diane. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, I'm proud on behalf of the Ways and Means Committee, on, on behalf of our House Republicans, again, to say thank you for your leadership. You know I, know, I know this is just a first step, but make no mistake, this is a giant step toward a day, yeah, toward the day when Americans aren't struggling under $1 trillion of tax hikes that hurt small businesses, that land on families, uh, that drag our economy down, that hurt patients. Under this new law, it's gone. We take a giant step toward a day when Americans aren't forced to buy health care they don't want and can't afford. And small businesses are no longer forced to offer health care their workers can't afford either. And we take a giant step today uh, to, to the moment when Americans can save in their health savings plans for those big out-of-pocket costs and they get a personal tax credit that can go with them from job to job, state to state, at home to raise a family or a business, even in retirement if they want. We take that big step so Americans can choose health care they need, not the health care Washington thinks they need. So this is a giant step forward, and I'll finish with this. We know you have some big, big plans on tax reform. <laughs> Bold plans. <laughs> At least we've heard they're great. <laughs> and I think they are. And make no mistake, today we've taken a giant step toward delivering bold tax reform that leapfrogs America into the lead around the world and simplifies this code like it's never been done before. Mr. President, we intend to deliver on that promise, too. And I'm proud to introduce uh, my friend from North Carolina, the leader and the chairman of the Freedom Caucus, who stayed at the table work to bring our, our conference together, uh, Mr. Mark Meadows. Uh, there, there are three numbers that matter today. 217, 1, and 318. Today we had a vote in the House that 217 votes actually came together from different districts from all across the country, from Maine to California, from Michigan to Florida and in between. And all of those 217 members came from different districts that represented a different kind of people. And it's a good day because of the number one, a president who wouldn't give up, a president who got engaged, a president who said, you know, I don't care what the mainstream media is saying, we're going to get this done and we're going to make it better for the American people. And Mr. President and Mr. Vice President, for those late night calls, I'm glad that I'll get some rest. <laughs> but I want to thank you on behalf of the most critical number. And that's the 318 million Americans who now, once again, will be able to get affordable health care to allow those decisions to be made between them and their doctor. And once again, make sure that they don't have to go begging and figuring out how to pay for their health care premium instead of their mortgage. So Mr. President, it's a great day for America. It's a great day for this administration. But it's a truly great day for the American people. God bless. And I have the honor of introducing Someone that I didn't know real well before this all happened. And I use the term gentleman in the most appropriate way. The gentleman from New Jersey, my good friend, Tom MacArthur. Well, 
Well, thank you, Mark, and hello, friends. Uh, I have said from the beginning of this long process that this has to be about people, not about politics. I watched my dad, who I love very much, he's in the latter stage of Alzheimer's now, but I watched him all my life working three jobs to pay off medical bills because he had no insurance when my mother died of cancer when I was four. He paid those bills off when I was in college. I remember the day he called me and told me he had finally lifted that burden. And I was proud of him. I'm very thankful to have had a small part in moving a bill forward that will help every American be able to afford insurance so that nobody has to endure that. Eight years ago, we had a president who faced a really important question. How do we get more Americans insured? How do we help the most vulnerable among us? It's a really important question. And he and his party, for all their efforts, came up with the wrong answer. The, the answer was, let's have more government control. Let's have more government imposition. Let's trust Washington and not the states. And it's failed. Today, we have a president who is facing the same question. How do we make sure that people with pre-existing conditions, the most vulnerable among us, are protected? How do we get premiums to come down for everyone else at the same time? How do we make sure that every American has a chance in this area? And I'm proud to stand with a president who has a different answer, a president who trusts the states and ultimately trusts the American people. So this is a big day. It's a first step, but it's an important step to make sure we keep our promise and we care for the American people. And I'm really proud to be part of that. And it's my, thank you. It's my honor to invite up uh, the uh, director of CMS, the administrator, Seema Verma. Well, thank you, and congratulations to the president, the vice president, the speaker, and all the Republican leadership and all the Republicans in the House. Thank you for what you did today. You know, I've spoken to a lot of moms across the country, like me, and they are so concerned about the rising cost of health care, paying for expensive premiums and high deductibles, having an insurance card that they can't use because it's still unaffordable. And what happened here today was an important step towards addressing that problem, so, I, so thank you. And for the Medicaid program, I've worked in the Medicaid program for over 20 years. The Medicaid program is our aged, our blind, pregnant moms, kids, disabled, and the poor. These are people that have no other place to go but the Medicaid program. And the status quo in the Medicaid program is not acceptable we can do better. And the big step that was taken today is a very important stride towards making that program work better, towards giving governors the flexibility to design programs that are innovative and actually improve health outcomes. I'm so excited about this big step forward, and I think it's a great day for our country. So thank you for everybody that was involved in this. It is uh, really a remarkable day, and it's a day of, uh, of, of great victory, not for uh, politics uh, or Washington, D.C., but for the American people. Uh, Mr. President, you, have, um, you understand and appreciate the importance of teams and teamwork. Uh, this is a remarkable team that is assembled here that is trying to address one of the real conundrums and challenges that this nation has, and that is how to make certain that we are able to provide the kind of quality care for every single American. But great teams don't just come together, they need great leaders. And so I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the privilege of being on your team and thank the Vice President and you for what you've done to date to make certain that this part moves forward. And we've gotten to this point right now because the men and women behind us have acted upon principle. And it's the principle that patients and families and doctors ought to be making medical decisions and not Washington, D.C. 
It's the principle that our health care system ought to be accessible for everybody and affordable for everybody and of the highest quality and empower patients through transparency and accountability and choices. That's the kind of principle that these men and women act upon. And I know that's the kind of principle that the Senate will bring to the table as they move forward and deal with this piece of legislation. And I can't wait for the day, Mr. President, where we're able to come back to the White House and we're able to gather with you as you put that, pick up that pen and sign that piece of paper that will move us in a direction that will provide for patient-centered health care for every single American. God bless you. So the journey continues. We will get it done. We will have great, great health care for everyone in our nation. We have an unbelievable country, an unbelievable country. But I want to thank the men and women behind me. I want to thank at least some of the men and women in front of me. And of course, I even want to thank the media. <laughs> Thank you all very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on in, put your head in that gig in Thank you.